Local investigators needed someone who was more familiar with these types of offenders. They called upon John Douglas of the FBI Behavioral Sciences Unit to provide a profile of the 22 caliber killer. Through this process, Douglas would provide the team with insight to the killer's psychological behavior. Currently senior analyst of APBnews.com, an online crime news website, Douglas spent 20 years pioneering the science of profiling. A profile is designed to, uh, to come up with the most probable offender. Its goal is, is to eliminate uh, a lot of false leads. It's, it's a, an attempt is being made as well to maybe refocus the investigation of law enforcement or possibly reinforce the investigation by telling them that you're on the right track here. Douglas was on the next plane to Buffalo. During the trip, he familiarized himself with the case files. I have to walk in the shoes of both the subject and walk in the shoes of that victim to truly understand really what took place during that assault. I'm going to be asking myself the question, why? Why this, this victim? He confirmed what local investigators believed. The only connections among the six murder victims were their race and sex. They were black men who had been chosen by at least one killer as targets of opportunity. The strangled survivor, Colin Cole, was not a random victim since he had been sought out in his hospital room. The profiler believed Cole's attacker was at the very least a racist copycat, not necessarily responsible for any of the murders. Douglas needed to probe further. He had to meticulously recreate each murder from the known evidence. Reviewing all six attacks, the profiler looked for behavioral characteristics that could be ascribed to just one offender. When you look at serial killers, you look at uh, patterns as well as signature. Signature is something that the offender does. It's, it's kind of repetitive behavior, but behavior that, that the subject has to do. It's more of a ritual. Douglas found the behavior from each of the four shootings to be similar. The 22 caliber killer had surprised random victims, fired quickly from close range, then bolted, leaving his prey before they were dead. The assassin's signature was a blitz style of attack. The cabbie murders didn't seem to fit that pattern. In those two cases, the killer had severely bludgeoned the victims, mutilated them, then dumped them far from where they were killed. The killer had spent a great deal of time with the bodies, even after death. To Douglas, this suggested two different killers. There are different types of serial killer. They're the very personal types of serial killers and the impersonal style and type of serial killer. The personal type of an offender wants to look in the eyes of, of the victim, and they want to spend hours, if at all possible, with their victims, being in a position of total control and domination. That's what really is going to, to turn them on. It appeared the cabbies were murdered by a personal type of serial killer. Those crimes demonstrated a rage and overkill that were not evident in the shootings. Douglas believed that the psychopathology of the 22 caliber killer left a seemingly different behavioral thumbprint. In the assassination style of, uh, of serial killer are somewhere in, in an age group be between 25 to 28 is when they first begin to surface. And how they can be described as really even more of an asocial type of personality, not so much antisocial, but asocial, keeping to themselves. They generally become obsessed with, uh, with weapons. They may be found with having multiple weapons as well. The person would probably, if he was in the military, I said that he'd have difficulty in, in any branch of the service and would probably, at some point, would even receive a, a, a discharge. To the profiler, it looked as if Western New York may have had two distinct serial killers on the loose. Douglas reported his findings to local investigators. Because the technique of profiling was new in 1980, a few had doubts about its reliability. 
some people look at, at this, so this is some type of voodoo or witchcraft. I mean, how are you able to determine, for example, age of the offender? And uh, actually, it's, it's pretty easy once you do enough of these cases. From his experience with similar cases, the profiler added that the 22 caliber killer would most likely be an avid hunter, having a history of menial jobs. Douglas stressed that it was up to the local team to find or eliminate suspects based on his profile. This is a, a good tool, but really, it's you. You're the people up there, You police. You're going to solve the case. I'm not going to solve the case. To me, this is the easy part. I'm just going to try to help you maybe refocus the case, give you an idea, paint a portrait of the offender. But really, you're the one who's going to knock on the doors and, and wear out the, the leather soles and, and come up with the suspect. In less than 24 hours, four black men were dead. The New York City press dubbed the killer the Midtown Slasher. The rash of attacks on black men in Manhattan had many similarities to the profile of the 22 caliber killer. New York City investigators called on John Douglas to provide a profile of the slasher. As I did an independent analysis, and when I started to paint a portrait of that person, my goodness, it was just like the Buffalo New York case as well. We have a subject here approaching uh, his victims, blitz style of attack. There was one major difference. The Midtown Slasher used a knife. The 22 caliber killer used a rifle. Now, we don't have the, the 22, uh, 22 weapon, but maybe the reason for that is we don't have the 22 weapon because we're, now we're dealing in areas that are very highly populated. If you have a 22 weapon, the sound of this would draw attention to himself. Douglas determined that the signature behavior was identical. With a gun or a knife, the assailant attacked in the same way. 